I feel that I have done some very important work, but if I try to think about, let's say, comparing my composing to, let's say, Beethoven, which many people on the face of it would consider totally ridiculous. You ain't no Beethoven, come on, forget it. What is it about being the first or the best? I hate all that. <laughs> against many other musicians of the last 50 years, what I have done is much less known. I'm not really terribly upset. Some people have no idea what, I, what I've done. That's just the way it is. I'm philosophical about that. But on the other hand, I say, my God, uh, I, I, I hope that after I die, I might still, you know, be a little bit more appreciated. A lot of people actually hate, hate me because of the outspokenness of my life and because of writing all this terrible atonal music. <laughs> if you're an American in the 40s and are halfway alive, you have to be aware of jazz. One night, I'm doing my homework there was Duke Ellings Orchestra. At that point, in that broadcast, I heard some sounds I'd never heard before, and it included two low clarinet sounds. And, and that was important to me, because the first composer to use two bass clarinets was the Rite of Spring, Stravinsky. And it's one of the most incredible, eerie, ancient sounds that any composer ever conceived. I said, wow, what? I mean, Ellington, Ellington knows about two bass clarinets. It went into me very deep, and I, you know, I lay, lay, lay for hours without going to sleep. Next morning, I said, uh, Pop, I, I heard some amazing music last night. Boy, I, I, I never heard any sounds like that. And I got to tell you, that music is as great as any classical music. And he nearly had a heart attack when I became a rather famous jazz musician and was making money playing with Miles Davis and with the Modern Jazz Quartet. And he saw that I had not turned away from classical music to go to jazz, that I was doing both. Then, you know, he finally came around. <laughs> 